Find your spot, and we will get rolling. John, go ahead and roll us. Hello, my name is Achiwungo Tagaling, and I'm the creative director of the Ok Rock Music Festival. And on behalf of the Ok Rock team, we would like to express a huge Uyana Hao Ah Unajish to everyone who helped make the festival a huge success, from the amazing musicians who shared their gifts and music, to the volunteers, our community partners, to our generous supporters the support staff of Tlingit and Haida, and the Juno Arts and Humanities Council, and most importantly of all, to all of you that came out to witness three nights of Indigenous excellence. Over the course of three extraordinary days, history was made, as Indigenous musicians from around the world gathered to share their incredible talents. Akrak embodies the traditional tribal values. Hold each other up, a reflection of the collaborative partnership between Klinget and Haida and the Juno Arts and Humanities Council. This commitment to fostering cultural diversity and promoting indigenous artists has left an indelible mark on the music industry that will echo for generations to come. We hope that all of you will join together with us as we look forward to Ok Rock 2025, endeavors that will further uplift and empower indigenous excellence. At the southern end of the Richardson Highway, nestled on a strategically chosen corner in Valdez, Alaska, you will find Magpies on the Fly. Magpies has grown from its original nest as a small brick and mortar bakery that hosted quaint gatherings for individual acoustic musicians over 16 years ago into a food truck and outdoor venue that now hosts multiple events, dinner theater, and over a dozen large bands each summer. Over a decade of trials and locations, we have settled into our current nest and began to dream big and lean hard into the investing of the growth of our rural Alaska performing arts culture. 2023 was our fifth year of this, and we began to see some traction. Magpies has successfully created products that connect our community and its visitors through food, art, and entertainment. This mission began with creating and growing a nonprofit production group, the Far North Follies, then partnering with them to bring dinner theater and historical comedy written, produced, and performed by locals to our Magpie stage. Our end of the road concert series is in its third year and beautifully growing. We began this project by bringing a professional audio engineer and musician on board, purchasing the correct equipment for her to do her job and providing her with the space and budget to create a performance experience that all musicians have enjoyed and felt honored to be a part of. Last year, we grew even more when we were able to collaborate with our neighbors in McCarthy and Chitna, providing the musicians with a smooth weekend of adventure and paid performances along the Richardson Highway. We have been developing a business model that holds a product on the stage equally as important as the product in the cafe menu. In doing so, we have created many jobs and contract work opportunities for writers, musicians, and performers to truly embrace their art and take a risk on themselves. It has been an absolute privilege to be able to provide paid opportunities to the performers and a unique Alaskan experience in rural Alaska for our viewers. I think it's really fun to be growing up around all of this, knowing that someday I can also help. And I love that there's a place in Valdez where we can just go sing and dance on stage and you don't have to worry about anyone judging you. It's just there for you to have fun. Hey everybody, we are Luna and Ursus from Homer, Alaska. Um, we had a good year. We released our first recording project, a uh, five song EP. And uh, we traveled around playing a bunch. We actually doubled the amount of gigs we had played the previous year uh, from 30 to 70, all in Alaska, mostly on the Kenai Peninsula. And our best, most enjoyable, largest crowd that we played to was at the Leva Amp Series in Soldotna, opening for a Pipeline Vocal Project. And that was amazing, big crowd, great sound system. Yeah, it was good. And uh, now we're just working on some new singles with a new producer right here in Homer. And we're super stoked about getting those out, cranking that Spotify algorithm and just growing our fan base. And just looking for new gigs, playing new places, playing more places. We just want to just keep playing more and more and- Always. Yeah. 
Why? My name is Finester. I am a local singer and songwriter here in Anchorage. And I specialize in R&B, soul, gospel, and OPM, which is Filipino music. I had the very opportunity of making my debut performance this year at the R&B Live back in April with Be Bad Production. And the privilege of being a part of the Ock Rock Festival fundraiser back in May, which I met so many wonderful people with the guidance of Engville and Andrea. And it's been such an adventure being a part of um, the Anchorage music industry. And it's been just such a blessing for me. And I was recently signed, actually, with Be Bad Productions, booking and management under the mentorship of Andrea Antoine. And I am looking forward to so many projects uh, in 2024. And I would like to formally invite you to my debut concert with my fellow artist, Jazzy Tungia, in March 9. And I would love to see you there. And lastly, I just want to wish everyone a good day at the Alaska Music Summit. Maraming salamat and mabuhay. Hey everybody, my name is Dave Emmert, and I am the host of the radio program Alaska's Fresh Catch. It's a weekly music program heard on seven stations across the state that focuses on new music, with a special spotlight on music coming out of Alaska. Now, 2023 was a big year. We built the show. Uh, we've done over 40 interviews, done a bunch of specials, and even took it on the road uh, and did a show down in Sitka. That was a lot of fun. So 2024 is going to be a lot of the same, but bigger and better, so stay tuned for that. But I thought it was important to participate in the Alaska Music Summit because I wanted to be a resource for the folks attending as a broadcaster. So um, if you're an Alaskan musician, by all means, I'd love to hear your music. If you're working on a music or music adjacent project, drop me a line. I'd love to chat about it on air. And even if you have questions about the radio side of the music industry, happy to answer those questions or point you in the right direction as well. So that said, a big thank you to Marion and everybody over at Akimi and Music Alaska for all their hard work for the summit. And I'll see you guys in the rest of 2024. Hey, Alaska Music Summit. I'm Zane Penny. Um, I'm a local uh, singer and songwriter from Anchorage, Alaska. Um, I'm visiting family <laughs> out of state right now. That's, that's why I'm not wearing a, a winter coat. But uh, 2023 was the best year of my life musically and just in every in every way um i went on my first tour with ashley young and huss i released my first album uh produced by huss myself and james glaves james glaves did most of the mixing on that one um i played sundown solstice festival that was awesome and 2024 is gonna be insane i'm looking forward to that um i have another tour planned for may bunch of shows shows lined up um so yeah i'm stoked to still be doing stuff and i'm stoked to be a part of this thanks for watching hi my name is finester i am a local singer and songwriter here in anchorage and i specialize in r&b soul gospel and opm which is filipino music I had the very opportunity of making my debut performance this year at the R&B Live back in April with Be Bad Production. And the privilege of being a part of the Ock Rock Festival fundraiser back in May, which I met so many wonderful people with the guidance of Engville and Andrea. And it's been such an adventure being a part of um, the Anchorage music industry. And it's been just such a blessing for me. And I was recently signed, actually, with Be Bad Productions, booking and management under the mentorship of Andrea Antoine. And I am looking forward to so many projects uh, in 2024. And I would like to formally invite you to my debut concert with my fellow artist, Jazzy Tungia, in March 9. And I would love to see you there. And lastly, I just want to wish everyone a good day at the Alaska Music Summit. Maraming salamat and mabuhay. Hey, everybody. My name is James Glaves. I'm a musician slash artist slash producer based out of Anchorage, Alaska. 2023 was a great year for me. I released nine solo singles under my band name Glaves. I collaborated with a bunch of other artists, and I also got the chance to produce some really cool artists, some being known as Zane Penny, Sundog, Bethlehem Shalom, and many, many others. And I'm hoping to do more of that in 2024. 
I also had a first this year. I got a placement on HBO for a show called Gossip Girl for one of my songs that I wrote several years back. That was very, very exciting. I filmed my very first music video as a solo artist this summer for my song called Dance Machine. It's really crazy and fun and silly. And um, I'm hoping to do another one here really soon, hopefully in February for another one of my new songs. And that was definitely a highlight of 2023. So thank you for uh, taking the time to check out this video. Peace. Hi, my name is Mark Manners. I'm a guitarist, composer, and educator based in Anchorage, Alaska. 2023 was a great year for me. I had the pleasure of playing with Grammy Award-winning drummer and composer Mark Walker in the Alaska Jazz Workshop faculty concerts. In the concerts, we featured original compositions by all the faculty members including my song, Journey to Forever. Having the opportunity to play with Mark Walker, John Damberg, the rest of the AJW faculty, Rick Zelensky, and all the other great musicians I got to play with in 2023 has helped me take the next step in becoming the guitarist and musician I want to be. For more information, visit my website at markmanners.com. Um, I am going to be brief in uh, announcing our next segment, which is more of people doing stuff that worked and telling us about it. Our next guest needs very little introduction if you have any Anchorage history. Um, and so I'm going to let him introduce himself. Everybody, please welcome Mr. White Keys. <laughs> Okay, fabulous. Oh, man, it's good to see all you uh, here today. I mean, all the cool guys are here. This is really cool. Um, okay, so I'm Mr. White Keys, and uh, let's see here. We got a, uh, we got a, okay, we're going to start. All right. So, <laughs> the magic of PowerPoint. All right. <laughs> So I'm Mr. White Keys, and what they wanted here at the Music Summit was somebody who was a brilliant musician and hilariously funny, and until that person comes along, you're going to have to settle for me. <laughs> so this segment is about, you know, what works, and, um, you know, how can you be more successful in the music business, uh, you know, get bigger crowds, more money, and it's all summed up by the old-time comedian George Burns, who said... It's a pleasure going broke in a business that you love. <laughs> now, you, we, we all know that uh, you know, the music business is not all about money. I mean, we're not basically in it for the money. We're in it for a good time and to play the music that we do. Um, but, you know, you, you want to take advantage of what, what you can do. All right, so all of you, I mean, we started playing here back in the, uh, in the night, uh, where, which, uh, right here, right? we got a touchy button here. All right, oh, I'm using the big button, okay. So we started out here in the 70s, uh, you know, 50 years ago in Anchorage uh, playing music, and, and basically everybody in this room can play circles around me. I mean, I, I am just a hack musician, and we, uh, you know, did what we did by making snotty comments and rude remarks, and that's, you know, where we got to where we are today. Um, but you can all play circles around me, but why is it that we figured out, or didn't even figure out, but... Uh, we figured out, you know, how to sell out virtually every show for 35 years. And it was a miracle. I mean, it, it, I, I, I not, there wasn't any plan. It just sort of happened, and we learned stuff along the way. So what I'd like to do here is to, um, all right, to share a little bit with you about... Uh, 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 about what you know, what 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 worked for us and what happened, and the thing is that uh, we're going to do this. We can't do this in fifteen minutes, but they, they, we're going to actually. Marion has set up 
a Zoom later on in March where we're going to go into this in detail and talk about what works and what doesn't. Okay, the music business is changing so fast it'll just make your head spin. I mean, in the old days, in, in the 70s when you started, the only place you could hear rock and roll was in a bar or in a concert or on the radio. I mean, there was no rock and roll on TV. I mean, it, at that point, it was still like renegade stuff, and, and it just it was not available. Well, okay, so what happened was that in the 80s, we got MTV, and there was more rock and roll on, uh, on TV, and that started to grow until we got into... Man, the big okay. Oh, all right. Well, here. Well, let's go. Let's go back there. And and, and now we we get into a thing where every TV show has a rock and roll soundtrack. Movies have rock and roll soundtracks. Late night shows have rock and roll house bands and guests. There's rock and roll on streaming, on cable, on Netflix, on on YouTube. It's everywhere. And what does that mean for you? Well, it means something really. Uh, pretty incredible. And that is that you are no longer in competition with other local bands. You're not in competition with Blackwater Railroad or, or the Sugar Strings or Nervous Rex. They're all great bands. And, but, and music is not all about competition. It's not about competition at all. It's about collaboration. But y you are actually in competition nowadays with guys like Beyonce, Taylor Swift, the Rolling Stones, Elton John, you were in direct competition with those guys because your audience can see these guys anytime they want. They can just turn on YouTube, they can turn on streaming, they can see them for free. There's no cover charge. They're not paying for expensive drinks. They're going to the refrigerator and getting a six pack. I mean, they can see these guys and you have to do something about that in order to not look like a complete monkey when you go on stage. I mean, these guys have got a bigger budget. I mean, Taylor Swift took in $305 million on one tour. I mean, it's incredible. And, you know, your audience is seeing these guys as well. Okay, so it's show business. These guys know about show business, and they are all exploiting it to the max, and that's why... They're getting $305 million on a tour. A lot of musicians are resistant to the idea of show business. They think, oh, I'm not going to sell out my art. It's not about selling out your art. It's about enhancing your art. I mean, even if you paint a masterpiece, you do the Mona Lisa, it looks better in a good frame than it does if it's just nailed up to the wall. So that's what we're talking about here. And years ago, I read one sentence that really drilled this into me. This is, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And, and it's something like that I've never seen before or since, okay? So there was a guy back, uh, you know, this is 90 years ago in the 1930s. And is and what, man, we, okay, his name was Saul Hurok. And he said, I don't present concerts. I present extravaganzas. Okay, and he wasn't a promoter or a producer. He was an impresario. I mean, he, he even applied this to his own title. You know, and that's show business. I mean, you've got to do everything bigger than life. And it's about enhancing what you do. You're going to do what you do anyway. Okay, I mean, you're in the music business to play music and uh, to have a good time, but it's better to have 200 people out there than it is to have six. You know, I mean, you want to expose what you're doing to as many people as possible. And all the big time guys know about show business, okay? Um, we got to, okay, all the big time guys are using these techniques and it didn't just happen by accident. They studied it, they learned the tricks of the trade, and there are tricks in any business. There are tricks of the trade, and it is you want to learn those. And one example was Motown. Okay, now we, uh, we've got Motown here somewhere. 
man, we, okay. So Motown had some of the greatest artists of all time. I mean, they had the Supremes. They had Stevie Wonder. They had Marvin Gaye. They had the Temptation. These guys were some of the greatest talents in the history of rock and roll. But Motown also had a school. And if you were a Motown artist, you had to go to this school. It was like a charm school, a finishing school. And they, all their stars had to go to this school. They had to learn how to act on stage, how to talk on stage, how to do an interview, how to dress to go to the grocery store, how to act when you signed autographs for people. And nothing was left to chance. I mean, you think that these guys reached their status that they're at, that they have just because of their talent. That's not true. I mean, they had a school of, of uh, you know, how to, how to be in show business. So how do you make more money? Well, Taylor Swift figured it out. So one of the first things you want to do is realize You've got to work together with the clubs. If you're, and I'm talking about, you know, we're just talking about here, here in Anchorage and local clubs. You've got to work together because the club owners, if you make, if your band makes more money for them, you're in a position to ask for more of that for yourself. Okay, if you make the same, you draw the same crowd that everybody else does. Well, why are they going to pay you more than anybody else? They're, they're just not. So it's a collaborative effort. It's a joint. It's a it's a it's a joint venture. The club owner is not your adversary. You should be working with a club owner, and the club owner is just the middleman, because really the audience is paying your rent. Okay, the minute you leave your garage rehearsal space and you go in front of an audience, you've got an audience and everything changes. You've got to give that audience everything and more. You've got to give them more than they expect. You've got to pull out all the stops to make what you're doing seem totally irresistible to the audience. You're creating an illusion. You're making the audience think you're cool. You can't tell the audience you're cool because the first rule of being cool is you don't ever say you're cool. I mean, you just can't do that. But every big time act does this and every big time act knows this. Okay, so we'll take the Ramones. The Ramones are usually cited as being the first punk rock band. They were not only a punk rock band, they were the punkiest of the punk rock bands. They were rebels, they were renegades, they were outlaws, okay? I mean, they defied every rule that anybody was using in the performing industry up until then. Okay, but what did Joey Ramone say? Some, bland, some bands blow it before they even play. The most important moment of any show is when the band walks out with the red light, amp lights glowing, the flashlight that shows each performer the way to his spot on the stage. It's crucial not to blow it. It sets the tempo of the show. It affects everyone's perception of the band. Now, all the mental notes I had been taking over the years came into play. No tuning up on stage. Synchronized walk to the front of the stage and back again. Joey standing up straight, glued to the mic stand for the whole set, keeping it really symmetrical. It was a requirement we adopted, a regimen that started immediately when we hit the stage to make sure you immediately go into the song and not lose that excitement before you even start. Okay, these are the punkiest of the punk bands, but they know the rules of show business, okay? And they're using those rules to create the illusion that you are going to look at them and think these are the coolest guys in the world. I want to come back and see these guys again. I want to buy all their records. It's the illusion they're creating. Okay, down in New Orleans, there's a Queen Ida. Well, she's from Lake Charles, but all right. But we'll call her from New Orleans just because you're here. All right. So Queen Ida plays Zydeco. If, 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 if those of you that don't know, Zydeco is like just about the most exciting music on the planet. I mean, it's incredible. It's usually an accordion and a fiddle and washboard plus bass and drums. And I mean, it's just amazing. 
Okay, so Queen Ida came up here. We, we got Queen Ida up here at the Fly by Night Club. She was up here three times. First time she was up here for a week, and it was just, and it was gangbusters. So a year later, we brought her up again. And the weekend after she played here in Spinard for a week, she won a Grammy, her first Grammy. Okay, we brought her up a third time, and she played here for a week. She went home, and the next weekend, she was on Saturday Night Live and never played a club that or a place that seated less than 5,000 people in the rest of her career. So Queen Ida was just totally amazing. So I was talking to Queen Ida one of the times she was up here, and we're talking about performing, and she said, you got to grab them in the first song. If you don't, you won't get them back. And she further went on to say, you've got three songs to get them in your pocket. And if you do that, you'll have them, you know, for the whole night. If you fail to do that, you've lost them, and you won't get them back. Okay. So you start with the first song, it's got to hit them with everything you've got. Well, how many times has your band or any band you've seen gone on stage and started with some sleepy little instrumental where everybody takes a five-minute solo and everybody's saying, well, we're going to warm up and we're going get, to you know, get our act together here and then we'll really start the show. You've lost them already. You've got to hit them with the first song, give them everything you got. Okay, so what else separates the way the big-time guys operate and the way that some local bands operate? Well, first of all, oh, all right, we'll go back here uh, to that one. Okay, so, all right, you give them everything you got, but never, never, ever start a set with a slow song or end a set with a slow song. I mean, you want to hit these guys, you want to give them a reason to stay from the first song, and when you hit that last song of the set, you got to give them a reason not to go home during the break and wait around for the next one. And how many times, I, I go to open mics, the open mic model is always somebody starting with some sleepy slow song, and you got to grab them at the beginning, you got to give them a reason to like you. So it's just basic show business, but the big guys know that, and a lot of people on a local level, you know, don't know that. Okay, so you, um, what's next here? The, uh, all right. Okay, so you've got, okay. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen Taylor Swift in a concert finish a song, walk over to an amp, grab a beer, walk over to the guitar player and say, oh, what do you want to do next? You know, should we do a slow song or should we do a fast song? You know, and, and do you want to start it with a guitar or maybe we should start with a drum roll? I mean, you know, it, 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 never. They will never do that. And the reason for that is that dead air is your enemy. In any part of the performing industry, whether you're on the radio, whether you're on d d TV, whether, whether you're live on stage, dead air is the enemy. You just don't do it. Okay? How about this? All right. Have you ever gone to a Rolling Stones concert? and see Keith Richards stop everything after a song and go to his amp and start fiddling with the knobs and flash his butt to the audience while he fiddles with his settings. I mean, these are basic tricks of the trade that all the big-time guys know. And we'll cover a million more of these in the Zoom presentation that we do coming up in March, and uh, Marion will be uh, announcing the date of that. I don't, I don't, has the date even been set? No, we haven't. Oh, I have to tell you. Okay, all right. So, yeah, but so we will we will do this and we'll go into a lot more detail. But the the idea is you're creating an illusion for the audience. I mean, it's show business. You're creating illusion for the audience. So one of the greatest musicians I've ever played with was a, was a jazz bass player named uh, Billy Peterson, and he was up here several times and he'd play with us. And you'd finish the night, and Billy Peterson would say, we fooled him again. <laughs> and that's it. I mean, no matter what kind of music you do, 
You know, the show business principles and techniques are the same. And they're designed to enhance your show, to make your band seem bigger than life, and to get you a bigger audience, okay? And so we'll leave with one more quote from George Burns. I mean, George, the old comedian, he knew show business. And he said, in show business, the key word is honesty. Once you've learned to fake that, the rest is easy. <laughs> So, I want to thank you all for coming here. I want to thank Marion and Ingville for putting this on. I mean, incredible. I want to thank you all, and we'll bring up our next presenter. <laughs> I keep talking about how... We don't have good mechanisms for passing down institutional memory in music, and uh, and I just got a, I got a whole dose of institutional memory right there, and I'm also visualizing sequin salmon outfits. So, um, I uh, can I get uh, the Act Two slides on there too because I was going to announce this after, but he spoiled my surprise. Um, one of the things we are doing this year, we thought of a thing we could do that might work. And that is a monthly Zoom training um, by donation, uh, donations going to the instructors. Once a month, we are going to pull together a, hey, what if we just sat down and learned this from somebody who knows? So in February, we are looking at, let's see, where is my, am I at the end? At the beginning. John's fiddling, sorry. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. Yay. So here's our office hours we're having tomorrow. We're going to continue office hours online all year starting next month. Um, in February, we're gonna talk about how do you promote music to radio now, particularly college and local public affiliates because that's who still plays local music. Um, but we can't send them a stack of CDs anymore, so what do we do? Um, so we're gonna talk to some folks in Alaskan radio who care about Alaskan radio about that. Um, Mr. White Keys is gonna give us the longer version of what he knows about filling a house for 35 years and I'm keeping it exciting every time. Um, and in April, um, some of you who are wonks like me want to actually get into the numbers for real. I would love to do that. Um, and uh, I would love to have some help too from people who are better at math than me. So we're going to try and get some guests on to help do a long explainer about that. It'll be on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday night on Zoom and we'll record them for your edification. All you need to do to know when these are happening is just be on our email list. And most of you are because you have registered. Um, so unless you said don't put me on your email list, you're going to find out about these pretty soon, including the dates. That is the end of that announcement. Um